For almost 50 years, nutritionists have waged a war against fats. They have made it look like the worst thing that has ever happened to our dietary habits. Yet, in reality, it is impossible for us to function without it. And as we point our fingers at fats, we often also incriminate cholesterol. We have been inundated by anti-fat propaganda about how cholesterol chokes up our arteries and suffocates our heart. But no one talks about how our bodies need cholesterol to perform some of the most basic functions, like making cell membranes or producing a covering layer of our nerves. It almost seems that someone is out for blood against fats and cholesterol, just because of how one-sided it is. The demonization of cholesterol was orchestrated very systematically and deliberately. If you think about it, we've been consuming fats since prehistoric times. Our medieval ancestors were eating butter and curd-heavy diets, as they still do in some rural villages. But the number of deaths caused by heart disease are not proportional, as the studies against cholesterol would suggest. In fact, the cases of heart disease have exploded in the past couple of centuries. So, obviously, it can't be blamed solely on fats, which we have been consuming since time immemorial. So, the question arises, who or what is behind this decades-long campaign against fats? In 1958, a young biologist by the name of Ansel Keys published one of the most impactful nutritional reports of all time. The seven countries study showed a direct correlation between fat in people's diets and high chronic cholesterol levels, which would then lead to heart disease. This study went viral, and soon governments were warning people to reduce fat in their diets as much as possible. But in all this, something was skimmed over. Sugar. Key study failed to account for the role of dietary sugars compared to fat. He even stated that most foods that contain high amounts of added sugar were also high in fat. In short, Keyes could not conclude decisively if heart disease is caused by fat or by sugar consumption. And we are just getting started. On average, adults consume about 19 teaspoons of sugar every day, more than double the recommended limit for men, and over three times the sugar limit for women. If we add all the sugar consumed over the year, that's enough sugar to completely fill 115 cups. Talk about a sugar rush. When we consume sugar, our pancreas releases insulin to tell our cells to absorb sugar from the bloodstreams. Over time, too much sugar desensitizes our cells to insulin, causing insulin resistance. This causes the blood to thicken with glucose and leads to high blood pressure. This is known as type 2 diabetes, where the body cannot effectively regulate blood sugar levels. High sugar consumption can also increase inflammation as sugar triggers the production of fatty acids in the liver. When the body digests these fatty acids, the product of the digestion can trigger inflammatory processes in the body. This inflammation can damage blood vessels and increase the risk of developing heart disease. Sugar is also known to disrupt the balance of good and bad cholesterol in our bodies, which leads to cholesterol plaque deposits. In case you haven't watched it already, watch our previous video on cholesterol, where we cover this extensively. It does seem like we are also painting a one-sided picture on sugar. And yes, our ancestors had access to sugar, but it's not in the form we are consuming nowadays. The problem isn't with sugar itself, but the form it is in. Consider fruits, potatoes, wheat, and rice. In this form, sugar exists in long, complex starch structures that are locked behind layers of fibers. This means that our bodies must work hard to break down the fibers and digest complex starches in order to access sugars. This is what allows for controlled release of glucose as it slowly passes through our intestines. Now, Envision all that pure white sugar in those pastries, ice cream, and sodas. No fibers, no complex structures, just free sugar on the digestive streets, literally. The moment it enters our bodies, it's like a tsunami of free energy. No wonder we suffer sugar rushes and crashes, exposing our pancreas to cope with such an incredible surge. 
and we ask ourselves why there are so many people with diabetes. What's interesting is that the scientists were well aware about the role that sugar plays in our cardiovascular health, but only one stood up against the majority. His name? John Yudkin, a British nutritionist. Yudkin had doubts about Key's study, so he decided to conduct the study himself and consciously included more data than Keyes had. And behold, Yudkins identified only one dietary factor strongly associated with heart disease, sugar. By this time, the anti-fat movement had gained traction and Yudkins' work was disregarded and suppressed. Yudkin and other scientists who spoke up against the demonization of fat were considered equally evil as the anti-tobacco scientists. In her 2014 book, Nina Teicholz shows how the proposition of saturated fats causing heart disease was driven. She saw that empirical evidence had almost no effect as compared to the influence of powerful people. On 23rd September, US President Dwight Eisenhower suffered a heart attack. The president insisted on telling the public about his disease. At this point, the president's doctor gives a public address asking everyone to cut down on fats and smoking and key study was used as a reference. As governments and corporations waged a war against fats, food manufacturers quickly shifted to low-fat products. You see, fats have always been used to make things taste better. Fat equals flavor. Food sales will plummet as consumers don't want to consume bland-tasting products. And that's how sugar stealthily crept into our food under the healthy label of being low-fat. Pure, white, and deadly. Before you know it, nobody even remembers fats. Sugar creates a sort of feedback loop. Every time we consume it, it gives us a feeling of happiness as the brain releases dopamine, making us crave it more. So our brains are now wired to seek it repeatedly. Some studies even suggest that sugar could even be as addictive as cocaine, and food manufacturers are aware of this. Sugar addiction is now boosting food product sales and creating recurring profits. So it's quite clear at this point what's behind the heart disease problem. The question now arises, was there anyone behind this false accusation of fats and our body's cholesterol system? In 2015, the New York Times published an article that accused Coca-Cola of funding research that played down the interlink between sugary products and obesity. In 2016, NPR.org published an article that broke down the findings of a certain riveting article published in the JAMA Internal Medicine. 50 years ago, amidst the World War II backdrop, in June 1943, a certain group called the Sugar Research Foundation was formed. The document showed the organization, known today as the Sugar Association, paid the equivalent of around $50,000 in modern currency to three Harvard academics for them to write a review of the available research on sugar, fat, and heart disease. The review's articles were specifically chosen by the sugar industry, and the paper, which was printed in the esteemed New England Journal of Medicine, downplayed the connection between sugar and cardiovascular health and explored the significance of saturated fat. The Sugar Research Foundation responded to this by merely stating that industry-funded research is still relevant as it plays an important and informative role in scientific debate. So why have we not considered enforcing scientists to disclose their funding sources? Similar to how all financial advisors are mandated to disclose their agenda, equity positions for full transparency. If you consider the amount of taxpayers' money paid for rising healthcare costs, it makes absolute sense that this needs to be mandated, doesn't it? For decades, the scientific argument has hated cholesterol for causing heart disease, and for decades, sugar has been protected from persecution. Also, that a few rich men could line their pockets while we stuffed our faces with sugary products in all shapes and sizes. Every day, we consume grossly unhealthy amounts of sugar, present in almost all ready-to-eat snacks and beverages, and the manufacturers of these products are well aware of what they are doing to public health. Simply by shrewdly funding and publicizing studies that work in their favor, these few rich men have been promoting the food that is ultimately killing us. Of course, 
governments all over the world are left wondering how the heart disease epidemic is not slowing down at all, with national health care costs ballooning. It's also no wonder that they are quietly rectifying the wrong to protect the public's trust in them. The fault also lies with us, because we too never stop to think about the studies which have put a huge question mark on our body's ability to digest fats, something that we as a species have been consuming since the beginning of time. Thankfully, this outlook is changing. The deceit of the SRF and sugar industry is slowly but surely coming to light, and people are realizing the importance of regulating their sugar intake.